Thank you, um, Alexander. Uh, thank you, Edmund, for uh, the excellent uh, keynote. Uh, we're now moving over to different perspectives, different aspects of the um, overall uh, topic. So the, the scene has been set uh, perfectly. As I've indicated earlier, it's one of the, the efforts or the ambitions of uh, the maritime talks to engage uh, the public sector, the industry um, from Hamburg and to enable the exchange. I also see that many um, lawyers uh, from specialized in maritime law have um, registered or are present. So that's one of our, our aims. And so I'm particularly happy to uh, introduce our, our next speaker. Uh, Jörg Kaufmann is head of uh, maritime shipping department at the Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency in Hamburg. So we now uh, have this clear uh, relation to Hamburg, to the public sector, to public authority. Uh, he was uh, educated in the uh, German Navy. So he's a naval uh, officer. Uh, he holds also a master in uh, business administration. And then after being a submarine uh, commanding officer and working in the private sector, he moved over to uh, the public sector first as a lead investigator at the Federal Bureau of Maritime Casualty Investigations where later on he was a head of that uh, Federal uh, Bureau of Maritime Casualty Investigations. And then he sort of moved over to the Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency uh, in Hamburg as head of the Maritime uh, Shipping Department. He will speak today about the German perspective on the regulation of our vessel uh, emissions. And I'm very much looking to forward to your talk. So the virtual floor is yours, Mr. Kaufmann, please. Thank you very much. And well, first of all, I will also face the technical challenge to share my screen. It worked at the beginning and I hope it will work again. So here we are, hopefully. Oops. Here we go. I hope everyone can hear me and see my screen. Yes, I've got the thumb up. Thank you very much. President of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, Judge Pike, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of the Maritime Talks 2020 and to give this speech about the German perspective on the regulation of vessel emissions. And thank you very much, Professor Matzluk, for this very nice introduction of yours. The Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency, or in short, the BSH, um, located in Hamburg and in uh, Rostock, is the central maritime agency in Germany. Among its different departments, one is responsible for shipping, which is my department, one for oceanography and related research, and one dealing with offshore wind energy. So a very wide range of tasks and responsibilities. And therefore, one of the core missions of BSH is to ensure a balance between the usage and the protection of the seas. Seagoing ships are the most environmental friendly means of transport and they are essential to maintain the global logistic chains. However, maritime shipping, as all other modes of transport, needs to also contribute to climate protection and, for example, to enhance its CO2 footprint. We just heard about the initiatives already taken internationally. But maritime shipping, as the most international industry branch, requires routes and regulations that are as much as possible agreed and adopted on an international basis by the International Maritime Organization. And again, we heard about this level playing field, which is required by the very excellent presentation of my predecessor. Regional solutions or even national add-ons are to be avoided whenever and wherever possible. Together with worldwide applicable rules and regulations, a harmonized implementation and enforcement would be desirable. 
acknowledging the different national legal systems, harmonization and implementation and enforcement obviously has its limits. Nonetheless, cooperation and coordination, at least with neighboring countries on a regional level, is of utmost importance. In Germany, the BSH is responsible for the enforcement of national, European and international rules and regulations. In Australia, for those dealing with all kinds of ship emissions. This includes the responsibility for effective monitoring and sanctionings of violations, unless these violations qualify as criminal acts and are being prosecuted by the public prosecutor's Office. Effective implementation and enforcement of rules and regulations require monitoring and surveillance, both to deter violations, but also to immediately to react to pollutions should it occur, either accidentally or deliberately. Monitoring is also a key element to obtain scientific knowledge, which in turn is the basis for an informed further development of rules and regulations. In Germany, different methods of monitoring and surveillance are in use. For example, the BSH operated Marine Environmental Monitoring Network with fixed monitoring stations in the North and the Baltic Sea. And this network is complemented by annual monitoring campaigns to survey the environmental status of the North and the Baltic Sea. Using either the BSH fleet of survey vessels or chartered vessels. We are also using satellite imagery and not least the worldwide Argo float system. Surveillance has been carried out either by aerial surveillance in Australia for oil detection and pollution control. And now specifically with regard to air emissions, we are using a land-based remote sensing stations, so-called sniffer stations, to measure the CO2, the ozone, NOx and SO2 of the passing ships. We have actually three stations as BSH, BSH three stations in operation, one of which is in Bremerhaven, a second one in Wedel close to Hamburg, and the third one at the Kieler Förde. Next one, a fourth one is planned for 2021 in Rostock. We finally accomplish all this with campaigns with mobile sniffer stations, which we place on board of federal vessels, again, either our own vessels or other federal vessels, to also monitor the ship plumes of passing ships. And by the way, the aircraft, which is pictured uh, on the left-hand side above, this is an asset of the Bonn Agreement. The Bonn Agreement celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. And this is a very perfect example of a long-standing cooperation and coordination of the North Sea bordering countries to combine resources to effectively survey the North Sea area. The Grand Bonn Agreement uh, also decided last year to also embark on the surveillance of the MARPOL Annex 6 regulation regarding air emissions. Um, we heard a lot about of, uh, on, Mar uh, on MARPOL already, uh, focusing closer on the um, air emissions, um, we do have the International Convention for the Prevention of Marine Pollution from Shipping, or in short MARPOL, with its Annex 6. We do have in uh, the EU, the complementing EU Sulfur Directive, um, uh, those two instruments provide the relevant rules and regulations internationally. The German Maritime Environmental Behaviour Regulations implement these into German law. It also stipulates sanctions through the administrative offenses. Again, in cases of gross violation, the German criminal code in its section on air pollution applies. Those cases 
will be handled by the public prosecutor. Violations that do not qualify as those gross violations will be followed up by BSH as administrative proceedings. The German maritime environmental behavior regulations contain all the necessary provisions. Um, there are, for example, mentioned um, the sulfur threshold um, that is to be complied with, the fuel compliance requirements, bunker deliveries, or onboard documentation. In Germany, it's the water police that finally enforces the roads and regulations, both in a role as a port and a coastal state. Together with the port state control, the officers make sure that the uh, ships that call at German ports are compliant to the international regulations. With regard to air emissions again, the BSH monitoring stations automatically inform the relevant water police in case of a suspected non-compliance. Documents verification on board and a bunker sample could confirm then the suspected non-compliance. Bunker samples are analyzed by competent laboratories, one of which again is an own laboratory of the BSH. Depending on the degree of violation, these cases will then result in either criminal proceedings or again in administrative proceedings to be followed up by BSH. Now a little look on the results of our monitoring stations. The consolidated results of our land-based remote sensing stations are more than positive. Over 33,000 ship plumes have been analyzed so far. And as you can see from the table shown, a significant decrease of fuel sulfur content had been observed after the SICA, the sulfur limit of 0.10, came into force on 1st January um, 2015 in the North and the Baltic Sea. And again, we have seen in the uh, presentation at the beginning how this uh, sulfur emission control area had been agreed and set into force internationally. The table shown also demonstrates an overall compliance rates of all ships measured by our stations in 2020 of above 99%. Of all individual ships that have been boarded for a MARPOL Annex 6 inspection as a result of risk-based targeting, only a very few were found to be eventually non-compliant. The vast majority of ship owners, ship operators, and of crews adhere to environmental regulations, routes and regulations. The crews are very aware of the importance of their role when it comes to limiting vessel emissions. Ships operating in the North and the Baltic Sea, as well as on inland waterways in Germany, are very much used to the 0.10 sulfur threshold since the SICA status came into force um, on 1st January 2015. But even before that, since 2010 already, ships in EU ports had to burn low sulfur fuel while they were alongside. Therefore, quite a while before the global sulfur cap of 0.50% took effect at the beginning of this year, low sulfur bunkers were already available in all the German ports. And so far, the transition to the Global Sulfur Cup has been very smoothly from our perspective, with no fuel oil non-availability reports of FONAR received by BSH so far. Our monitoring results are not only being used to targeting vessels for onboard inspections. They are also the basis for reporting obligations of Germany to the IMO and or to the European Commission. Reporting obligations are fulfilled by the Ministry, um, Federal Ministry of Transport or the Federal Ministry of the Environment and Nature Conservation based on our data. 
Also to monitor our own quality, we have developed key performance indicators and we are reviewing those key performance indicators um, annually. Doesn't work. Ah, here we go. Um, once again, come on back to cooperation and coordination best practices as well as implementation and enforcement challenges are shared with respective administrations in the EU as well as worldwide in the context of IMO. And they are reported into various regulatory committees as you can see on the screen. BSH plays an active part by providing data of its own monitoring and surveillance activities and from various scientific projects. Fact-based decision-making supported by scientific data is a key element for the further development of rules and regulations. And currently we are working on two dedicated projects that target air emissions and one of those projects, the Skipper project, I'd like to introduce a little more in detail to end my presentation. Different monitoring techniques are actually in use, for example, in the Netherlands, in Sweden, in Denmark and in Germany, who are partners in the Skipper project. Skipper or in long the shipping contributions to inland pollution push for the enforcement of regulations is an EU funded project and it will help to compare and assess the results obtained with different monitoring techniques and thus help to harmonize the implementation and enforcement efforts of the countries involved. Another goal is to determine how remote piloted aircraft systems or drones might help to enlarge the existing monitoring networks as drones might operate autonomously in areas distant from the shoreline and more cost efficiently as for example the manned aircraft. On the picture that you can see on the screen now is uh, one of the uh, picture taken by one of the drones in the um, skipper project, actually. The actual campaign that we are running now in uh, Wedel, close to Hamburg at the River Elbe, will end at the beginning of October, on the 2nd of October. And the results obtained will be used during uh, the Bonn Agreement MARPOL Annex 6 expert workshop, which is to be held in the first quarter of 2021. And now to sum up um, the German perspective on the regulation of vessels, my takeaway messages for today are agree and adopt rules and regulations globally, ensure a balance between the protection and the usage of the seas, promote cooperation and coordination for a harmonized implementation and enforcement as much as possible, Monitoring and surveillance is key to effective implementation and enforcement. And finally, scientific knowledge is key to the further development of the next generation of routes and regulations. And I will end my presentation. I hope that I'm good in time and ready to take urgent questions as if there are any. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaufmann, for your uh, excellent presentation. I'm really happy that you've, are, and this is why we invited you, you um, brought us to the phase of implementation, to the practice, to connecting the international level of regulation to the national and, uh, and local level. You've been perfectly within time. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a bit, I'm almost worried that uh, everyone is behaving so well with keeping uh, the time. That's unusual for our scientific workshop. Um, 
I'm personally particularly interested in your in the Skipper project because we have a third party funded uh, project called Ship Trace on shipping emissions. And uh, this is interesting because usually our emissions are, are perceived when it comes to land, to the land sea interface, are perceived as health problems for populations in or close to ports. But of course, this extends further inland and it's interesting to see how this could be monitored. 